What's up, yo? Big Cat 305 here. Today we're making beef stew. That's right, homemade beef stew. And it's so easy. There's a lot of ingredients, but as long as you prepare, organize, make stuff ahead of time if you can, it is awesome. We're gonna cook in layers. That's gonna give it all the flavor. And man, stick around, because you are gonna love it. So if you are new to the channel, what we do here is we try to simplify the cooking process, make it easy and fun. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell. And if you're a current subscriber, thank you for all your support. We really do appreciate it. Let's get cooking. All right, here we go. We're gonna start off by chopping up a large onion. You can use any kind of onion you want here. And you want to get a pretty decent fine chop, I would say. We're going to saute these up real nice. So here we go. We're going to speed it up for you just a tad. And here's what they look like. Next up, we have three medium celery stalks. And we're going to chop these up as well. I don't want to go too thin here. I don't want to go too thick. Kind of like a medium chop, I would say. Next up, three medium carrots. Kind of the same thing. Try to make your veggies the same size. I end up splitting these up and then dicing them. Again, we speed it up just a tad. And we finish up our carrots and this is what they look like. Next up, we've got some white mushrooms, large to mediums. If they're large, cut them in four. If they're medium, cut them in half. The point is we're gonna cut them pretty large because they're gonna reduce quite a bit. And this is what they look like. Next up, we've got some golden potatoes, Yukon potatoes. Again, kind of the same thing. We wanna chop these up. All the veggies are about the same size, basically. And you wanna just chop them up real good. It's a rough chop, no need to get fancy. And here is what they look like. Now you wanna put these in uh, some fresh water and this will keep them from browning. Next up, we've got our chuck. Two and a half to three pounds. Some beautiful beef chuck here. You can see the marbling on this. Really nice piece of meat here. So we're gonna cut these in about an inch and a half to two inch cubes. So I like to slice them the long way first. It really doesn't matter which way you go. Um, and then you want to just take out any kind of excess fat that you get. You don't want those big hard chunks of fat. That's just going to uh, be a problem. So just cut out whatever fat you can. It does not have to be perfect. And you definitely want to leave some of that fat in there because that's what's going to give it some flavor. But just take out the big, big chunks and you'll be great. So just keep dicing, cubing them up into about an inch and a half to two inch cubes. A little tip is to put them in the freezer about an hour before you start and they are much easier to cut. And here is what they look like. Beautiful. Next up, we are going to coat these with some flour. Get yourself one of these Tupperwares, put your meat in, add three tablespoons of flour, put your lid on this cheap Tupperware that I've had for like five years now, give it a good shake and look at that. Beautiful, easy, simple, done. Next up, we are gonna brown our chuck. All right, this is, uh, we got it on medium high heat here. You do not wanna overcrowd the pan. You wanna get make sure that meat has room to breathe. You don't want them on top of each other all clumped up. That's kind of a key. And we are just gonna let them sit for about four minutes on each side until we toast them up nice and brown. The goal here is not to cook them completely, just to sear the outside. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is layer number one. Season and sear your beef for amazing flavor. So we're gonna season these as well with some salt and pepper. This is gonna give it such an amazing flavor. Uh, layer number one, there you go. So we turn it over after four or five minutes. Again, not looking to cook these all the way through here, just looking to sear the outside and give it that amazing flavor. It's looking good as you can see. The first round is about done. We take those off 
and get ready to add round number two right here again you don't want these touching each other you want to give them some room so they get nice and hot on the bottom and look you can see the second second batch actually came out a little bit better I guess the pan was a little bit hotter and that's what they look like right there look at that nice now we add our onions to that same oil that the beef was seared in so onions added in a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper looking good saute it up you can see the color already and that's layer number two saute your onions garlic mushrooms in the same pan as the seared beef that is going to give it such a great flavor profile you want to get those onions translucent then add your garlic a little bit later because garlic cooks much quicker and then your mushrooms these mushrooms are going to reduce a lot mushrooms are basically filled with water so that's why you want to bring them down and then you're gonna add your tomatoes your tomato paste which is gonna give it a nice acidic value which is gonna balance out your flavors here so you want to stir that tomato paste in along with all the other goodness and you can see the color starting to come in and it's looking good now we're going to add some red wine and this is layer number three you're going to deglaze your pan with that red wine all those bits and pieces on the bottom we're going to stir all that up and get it all together and that red wine is that liquid that's going to help you do that now we're going to add it all back into, not back into, we're going to add it all into a nice stock pot where we're going to finish up our beef stew. So here we add in our beef broth, unsalted, four cups. Very important for the unsalted part. You do not want this to be too salty. Now we add our beef back in. And here we go, layer number four. We're gonna season with our smoked paprika, Italian herbs, salt, and pepper. Here's the Italian herbs. And we're gonna add salt and pepper on top of this. All the ingredients and the amounts will be in the description below. Here's our salt. Again, we didn't use salt, uh, salty beef broth we use unsalted beef broth so that's why we're adding all this salt in now and trust me <laughs> it tastes phenomenal so here we're gonna stir it all together and looking beautiful and we let it simmer for about an hour to an hour and a half and this is what it looks like after an hour you can see the film on top you can see the mushrooms have reduced a lot. You can see that broth is getting thicker. And we haven't even added the veggies yet. Once we add those veggies with the potatoes, that will bring some more starch and thicken that broth as well. So here you want to taste it just to see if there's any kind of seasoning you need to add, which we don't. So here we go. We add our potatoes and layer number five add your potatoes carrots and celery closer to the end so they do not get soggy this is your texture layer this is going to make it so it tastes phenomenal it's not a big soggy mushy mess this is a beef stew you want a beef stew you don't want a, a mushy soup okay so that's why you add your veggies in later so again we're going to cook these for about another hour and look at that, <laughs> it's looking beautiful. And then finally, we're gonna add our peas with just about 10 minutes before so they keep their bright green color. That's for our presentation layer. We're gonna keep that beautiful color. It's gonna be beautiful. It is beautiful. And look at that. We're gonna cook it for about another 10 minutes after we stir it up. We're gonna cover it. Let it simmer 10 more minutes show you what we're dealing with here look at this 
unbelievable this look at that <laughs> that looks really good one little close up and we are done let's go check it out Hoo <laughs> we have some homemade beef stew oh it looks delicious it smells delicious let me tell you as long as you organize yourself prepare a little bit you can do a lot of the stuff ahead of time you're cooking in layers that's the key cooking layers that gives it the flavor profiles oh and it uh, I've been smelling this for a couple hours now. I cannot wait to dig in. But first, we're going to give you a close-up. Let me try to get all this, as much as I can on one spoon. Because it's a lot. Oh, there we go. That looks good right there. I'm going to come around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at all that goodness all right let's dig in so let me get a nice big piece of beef and some potatoes and peas and celery mm. Mm. oh my god the flavor, ridiculous. That beef melts in your mouth. That chuck, it's been cooking on slow for a couple hours now. Oh, it's just, the potato is not soggy at all. It's perfectly cooked. The peas taste great. Let me get some of this good stuff down here. Look at that, here we go, some mushroom. Mm. oh my god <laughs> all right let's try some of this bread this is french baguette oh come on who doesn't like dipping a nice piece of french bread and beef stew look at that <laughs> oh yeah that's what i'm talking about right there hmm Oh my God. So this time of year when it's cold outside and you need something to just warm you up inside right down to the core, this is what you want right here, man. This is, oh, this is comfort food at its best. Let me tell you, all that goodness, veggies, beef, the layers, the flavor, the seasoning is perfect. I mean, it is awesome. Everybody, you got to try this recipe. You will love it. I guarantee it. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting. And we'll keep on cooking. Big Cat out.